we go. So good morning, grade 11 students here. We started with genetics part two. First of all, I'm going to make a revision for what we have discussed the session before. So we discussed about the dominant allele. Dominant allele, we said that is the allele that is the strong allele that can be expressed in the case of both homozygous and heterozygous. We said homozygous, it's the pure and heterozygous, it's the hybrid. Also, we said what is the uh, <clears throat> the recessive allele, a recessive allele, it's the, the allele that cannot be expressed unless in the case of homozygous. So to have an example about this, this is the dominant allele B, dominant allele for the brown eye allele, and this is the recessive one for the blue eye allele. So dominant, it can be expressed when it's homozygous or pure, or whenever it is heterozygous or hybrid. So whenever we have two identical alleles, two same alleles, we said it's a homozygous or pure. Two different alleles, like this case, we said it's a heterozygous or it's called hybrid. This BB, it's the recessive allele, B small, B small. So it's recessive allele, so it cannot be expressed unless in the case of homozygous. This is related to the dominant and recessive allele. Now, let's move for the uh the co-dominant co-dominant we said that both alleles they are dominant co-dominant as i said before it's co-expression expression of two alleles these two alleles they are dominant so they will struggle and they will fight to be expressed together this is the case of co-dominant co-dominant this is the case of blue fish and the red fish they mate and they gave birth to this fish this fish was uh, blue striated with red lines, for example. So these both alleles, they are expressed. The red color allele and the blue color allele, these two alleles, they are expressed and they give this fish. So now we have two alleles that are expressed. We are talking about the case of co-dominance. We said about the phenotypes, it's the sum of the traits in the individual, whereas the genotypes, it's the sum of alleles. It's the genetic makeup. For example, if I have, for example, blood group A. If I told you blood group A. First of all, before I move to blood group A, I want to ask a question. What are the different uh, alleles for the blood group G? Yeah, raising your hands. What are the different alleles for the blood group? How many alleles do we have? Yes. How many alleles do we have for the blood group? Yes, Lynn? A, B, and O. A, B, and o. The o. Which of these are dominant, Yaline? A and B. They are dominant. And O, it's? Recessive. Recessive. Okay, thank you, Lynn. Let's move now to Ali Bustani. Ali, if I told you I wanted the genotype of the individual having a blood group A, what are the genotypes? What are the possible genotype or genotypes? Okay. A, A. Okay, first of all, A, A. This is the first one. And the second, mm. if you have second. A, O. A, O. Very good. Excellent. So here, but the group A is expressed in the both in the case of homozygous or in the case of heterozygous. Thank you, Ali. Moving to blood group B. Blood group B, let's have Hamad Hassan. Hamad Hassan, what do you think? What are the possible genotypes for individual having blood group B? Yes, Muhammad? Hamad Hassan, do you hear me? Okay, let's move to Cynthia. Cynthia, what do you think? Blood group B. S does B, B, yes. B, and B, O. B, B, or it can be? And B, O. B, O, excellent. Or B, O. B, O. It can be expressed in both cases, homozygous or heterozygous. Thank you, Cynthia. So what do you think about the O? Yes, Rima, what do you think about the O? What are the possible genotypes for individual having blood group O? O, O. O, O, other than the O, O. Yes. Yes? Other than OO, do we have other than OO? No. Why? Because it's recessive. 
Excellent, because the allele O is recessive and cannot be expressed unless in the case of homozygous. So it should be only OO. Here, these are genotypes. If I give you this genotype AA, what is the blood group, ya Tala? If I give you AA, what is the blood group? It's A. Blood group A. And is it AO? It's also A. It's also A. If I told you BB. B. B, B, O, B, B also. Why do you think about O? It's O. Oh, it's O. So here, thank you. So here, the genotypes, the code for the phenotypes. Here, the phenotype, we're talking about the blood group. Yes, Muhammad? Yes. I think you have probably internet connection. No problem. No problem. No problem. It's okay. Thank you. So here we move to true breeding. We said the true breeding is individuals that are having the same genotype as their parents. We called about true breeding. We talk about homogametic and heterogametic. We said that homogametic individual that gives only one type of gamete, example, the female is ovium, or the heterogametic giving more than one type of gametes, example about this, the uh, Male gamete, for example, we have X and Y, so diff two different gametes. Holandric gene. What's the meaning of holandric gene? This gene is carried only by the Y chromosome. We talk about the bi dominant and the bi recessive, bi homozygous and bi heterozygous. And we move to this note. This is what, what the last note last time. It's talking about the sender, that they have the same phenotype as their parents. So the line is a true breeding one. Let's now move to the transmission of the allelic genes. Let's move to this figure. In this figure, we have the parents. Parents, one of these parents, they are gray female mouse. And the other, it's white male mouse. First of all, as we said before, the dominant allele is symbolized by a capital letter. And it should be symbolized by a capital letter. Here, they gave us the genotype. It's GG. And here, they gave us the genotype. It's WW. From here, what can you say about the parents? Honey, what can you say about the parents? Are they hybrid or pure? They are hybrid. They are hybrid, the parents. Ah, oh, no, pure. They are pure. The parents, they are pure. Since the one having the gray, it's have GG. And the G -G. one having the uh. white, it's WW. Okay? So moving, yes. okay, honey, thank you. Moving now to Joel. We have two G. We have GG, the genotype for the gray mouse is GG. Okay, what are or what is the possible genotype or genotypes for this individual, they are GG. What are the gametes? If we have a GG, what are the possibilities of the gametes? Yes, Joel. G100%. Excellent. So G, we have 100% to have a G. There is no chance to have other than G. So this is called 100% G. So only one type of gametes. Also for the white mouse. Nada, what do you think about the white mouse? White mouse, it had the uh, WW. So W, W, what are the possible gametes or what is the possible gametes? It's also 100% W. 100% W, very good. It's 100% W. So to be clear from the beginning, what you have to know is the following. You have to know the symbols of the male and the female. So whenever I talk about the male and females, you have to know the symbols. So this is a gray female mouse. From now on, gray female mouse should be the female symbol is going to be the swan. Already you know this from grade nine. And the male symbol is going to be this symbol. So from now on, you don't have to write the gray female mouse. You write this and you write between this a gray mouse. Okay? From now on, you don't have to write male or female. You can use these symbols. Okay, so crossing these one, G and W, what do they get? 
they give a hybrid gray mouse. What the meaning of hybrid? It's heterozygous, having a genotype G from the mother and W from the father. So it's heterozygous, having a genotype G, W. If I told you, and you're the one who can answer this question, raise your hand. Specify, pay attention to the word specify. Specify the dominant and the recessive alleles. Raising your hands. Let's see. Specify the dominant and recessive. Yes, Tala. Uh, the dominant. First of is... all, before you start, Tala. Sorry, before you start. Yes. Uh, what the meaning of specify? Let's know before you start what the meaning of specify in order to continue with this verb. What the meaning of specify? Uh, what do you have to do? To say which one is the dominant and the recessive and spec and justify. Excellent. This is I want to hear. And you want to hear that you have to justify. So any verb, I will review this, and I will repeat this. Any verb at the rhyme of Wi-Fi, kill verb, ala was in Wi-Fi, we have to justify. Specify, identify, classify, uh, all of them, they are at the rhyme of Wi-Fi. You have no Wi-Fi, sure. So Wi-Fi, so we have to justify. Yes, Tal, can you specify the dominant and the recessive allele? Yes. Yes. Uh, the dominant is the gray because it's uh, capitalized and the phenotype is it, it, the. Okay. Now the let's stop here. Descendant is gray. Okay. Let's stop here. If I didn't give you the symbols and in the exam, I'm going to do so. I won't give you the symbols. I will give you a gray female mouse crossed with a white male mouse. And we get in the F1, or the meaning of F1 in the first generation, we yes. get hybrid gray mouse. I didn't give you the symbols. And you don't work to work on the symbols. Symbols later on, you are going to give the symbols. But if I didn't give you the symbols, and with no capital, no small letter, how can you identify the dominant and process? So it's the gray because the phenotype of the descendant is gray. Is a gray. Okay, this is true, but we wanna wanna solve it in another way. Wanna uh, okay. is, uh, Can you? Um, okay, let's give the chance to Hani. Okay, thank you, Tala. Okay. Thank you very much, Hani. What do you think? It's there's gray is the dominant, and with one with with one because it's expressed in both uh, homozygous and heterozygous cases? No, you have to go to the experiment. It's true, it's not in this case. I have to go to the experiment. Lean, you were raising your hand. Thank you, honey. What do you think, Lean? Uh, the gray allele is the dominant because the F1 generation's phenotype is gray. Excellent. Uh, and it contains both alleles G and W, but G is expressed. Okay. Excellent, but you have to write it in another way. Yeah, pay attention to me. What I have to say, whenever you want to, uh, thank you, Lina, thank you, Hani, and also Tala. So whenever you want to identify a dominant or recessive allele, what I want to do is to start by the steps. You have to say, after crossing gray female mouse with a white male mouse, all the F1 generation they were, gray so the gray allele is dominant over the white allele which is recessive and this white allele it was masked it was masked in the f1 since it was masked by what by the dominant allele here after crossing a gray female mouse with a white male mouse all the f1 generation they were gray so the gray allele and pay attention, we don't say the gray skin color is dominant over the white skin color. The gray skin color allele is dominant over the white skin color allele, which is recessive. And also we have to mention here that the parents are pure. By this way, we can identify whether the allele is dominant and recessive. In the exam, Tala, I won't give you the symbols here. They make it a simplified one and they gave you the symbols here, G and W. Your job is to give the symbols. So let's start step by step. So the first step is, uh, first, after crossing a female gray mouse with a male white mouse, 
what did we get? We get homozygous F1. What do I mean of homozygous? All of them, they have the same phenotype. All of them, they have gray coat. So the gray coat color allele is dominant or character here I use is dominant over the character of the white color. And the parents, they are pure. Here, I identify which one is the dominant and which one is the recessive. My job is to give the symbols. I will tell you designate by symbol the corresponding alleles. Which one is the dominant? The gray. The gray is the dominant, so it should be symbolized by a capital letter. So let G capital be the symbol of the allele coding for the gray coat. And let W small be the symbol of the allele coding for the white coat allele. So these symbols, you have to mention them in the exam or in the question, and they are not given. In this question, they are given, but you have to mention them here. Any questions about the uh, identification of the dominant and recessive allele before we move into the F2 generation? Any no. questions? If you have any question, please raise your hand before we continue to the next idea. No questions? Okay, great, great. So let's move now to the second idea. Second idea, it was talking about the F2. First of all, you have to know from now on, whenever I said F1, it's the first generation, okay? And for example, let's say your mom and your dad, they gave birth to you and your uh, brother and sisters. So this is the first generation. One of your brother got married and they gave birth to, uh, for example, two babies. So these are the second generation and so on. So F1 is always said, it's called the first generation. While F2 is called the second generation. F2, it results from what? Second generation, the F2. So you have to know from now on that F2 it results from the cross between F1 and F1. Any one of you remembers what do we call the crossing that occurs between F1 and F1? I want to hear new voices. I want to hear the. That's true. Maya Salha. Yes, I will repeat. Maya Salha, what do we call the cross when it's done between F1 and F1? So F1 is crossed by F1. What do we call this cross? Do you uh, remember? Test the cross? No, not test the cross. Related to test the cross. Arib, let test the cross. Alas and Danny, do you remember it? I cross F1 with F1. And meaning that I slap myself. What does this mean? Ms. Rana, can you help us? What do we call this cross? F1 Selfie with F1? cross. Excellent. Selfie, Selfie cross. cross. Selfie cross. Selfie cross. Thank you. So F1 cross with F1 is called self cross. So crossing F1 with itself, we call it self cross. So this one occurs in animal, doesn't occur in human. So this one is called self cross. F1 cross with F1. So this self cross F1 with F1, it leads to the formation of the second generation, which is called F2. So F1 crossed with F1. What is the genotype of the F1 generation? Who can help me? I was standing. What is the genotype of the F1 yeah. generation? Sure. F1 generation, uh, Ali. This F1 generation. Who can it genotype? Uh, GW. Excellent. GW. Okay. So GW, this yeah. is the F1 generation. How many types of gametes does it get? Yes, yes. Uh, Muhammad Aisa. Ali. Thank you, Ali. Muhammad Ali. Muhammad Ali. Good morning, Muhammad Ali. Muhammad Ali. Muhammad Ali. Yeah, good morning. Yes, I'm back to my. So, Sabah and Nur. So, I'm Ali. Ali said that F1 generation. No, no, Mr. Ali. I'm Sema, I'm Staz. Samani now? Uh, okay, so I'm the only F1 generation. So Al Ali Bustani, Ali Bustani said that the first generation of one has genotype GW. Okay. 
Okay. So what are the gametes that are formed here? How many type of gametes? Nani, Ustaz. What are they? English, English. I don't know Arabic. 50 percentage J. Excellent. 50 percent G. 50 percentage W. Very good. So we have 50 percent G and 50 percent W. Also, if we cross both of them, so also in the second one, we will have 50 percent G and 50 percent W. This is the table of cross shown here. So G for the male, it gives 50 percent G, 50 percent W. And here we have 50% G and 50% W. Thank you, Muhammad, and thank you, Ali. Let's move now to the You're next welcome. slide. Okay, so here in F2, we get mice with the white coat for genotype WW. So they should inherit, they should get a little W from each of their parents at once. These parents, they should be heterozygous. So we're going to talk about this. Before I move, note. Homozygous and heterozygous always we use it for genotype, while homogeneous and heterogeneous we use it for the phenotype. So steps of the factorial analysis. Remember the factorial analysis you did it in grade nine. Factorial analysis. What do we have to do is as follows. First step, you have to write the phenotype of the individual. For example, the male is gray, let's say, and the female is white, or the opposite. Second step you have to write the genotype of the individual, GG, GW, WW, according to your question. Third step is to write the gametes. And the fourth step, to write the table of cross, what do we call it by the planet square? And the fifth step is to give the table of results. Let's start step by step. Factorial analysis for F1 crossed with F1, okay? Here, I'm going to start at the beginning. At the beginning, it's very simple. Since I didn't uh, write the uh, table of cross, it's, it's very simple. So here we have this symbol for what? Let's see. Uh, I can use, uh, I should use nada. Nada, what do you think? What is this symbol? It's for what? Hi, Dilal, female. Excellent. And this one, Yanaba? For the male. From now on, you have to use this. You don't have to write female gray mark. Male gray mark. Okay? So these are the symbols. This one for the male, the middle X, the middle plus for the female. And this one, like the arrow, is for the male. What does the X mean? Yes, uh, Yusuf, what do you think? What does the X mean? Uh, no, combined. They mating. Excellent. Uh, so this means mate. mating. Okay? So we have mating between a gray mouse and a white mouse. Genotype of the parents, they are pure. So GG cross with WW. Gametes, they are 100% G and 100% W. So here I make it a simple one. So 100% will be GW. So the phenotype will be gray coat mouse. This is the simple one. I want to move to the complicated. This one. F1 cross with F1. All of you, you have to pay attention to this. This is a very important step, and most of your quiz is going to be based on these questions. So first of all, let's move for the phenotype. The phenotype, the male and the female, is going to start step by step. So here, the female and the male, male gray, and the female it was gray, since we crossed F1 with F1. So this is the first step. I wrote the phenotype of the individual, gray, male, Cross with the gray female. And one is going to ask me, Mister, how did you know that the male is gray and the female is gray? But they said F1 cross with F1. Sure, one of them is going to be the male and the second one is going to be the female. Okay? Then moving for the genotype of F1. Genotype for the F1, GW cross with the GW. Gametes. Gametes from now on, we have to write them in the symbols. So here you have to write them inside the male symbol, for example. These are the male gametes. And the female gametes, you have to write them in this. Okay, these are the gametes. Here we have G 50%, W 50%, G 50%, W 50%. And here we continue. 
So that we start phenotype, genotype, gametes. So simply, you have to start with the genotype, phenotype. Phenotype, then genotype. G, genotype. Then G, gametes. Then we write the table of crops. This is the table of crops. I divide it into male and female. G, 50%, W, 50%. Pay attention here. The G is the dominant. It should be capital letter. Why the W is the recessive, it should be in small letter. And then we move G50%, W50%, G50%, W50%. Then we cross G to GG. So it will be GG. How did we get 25%? It's 50 times 50 over 100. So 50 times 50 divided by 100, or you can simply cross zeros and zero. There's 5 times 5, 25%. G with W, it will give GW 50 times 50 divided by 100, or you can simply cross zero from here, zero from here, five times five, 25. Then moving for W, GW, it's G with W, so it will give 25%. Also, the last one, W with W, 50 times 50 divided by 100, 25%. So if I told you, what does the GG get? What is the genotype given by GG? Who can tell me? GG will give which color? Yes. GG, which color will we get? Yes, Tala? Gray. 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 Okay, gray. Excellent. So it will give gray, while GW also will give a gray. Also, GW will give a gray. Since G is dominant and it can be expressed in both dominant, uh, sorry, in both homozygous and heterozygous. So this is the gray color. These three, they give gray. So what is the percentage of gray? It gives 75 75%. While the rest is going to be WW25%, so 25% will be white in color. Okay, here we finish the table of crops. What do we still have? We still have the table of results. The table of results, we have GG25, GW, 50. How did I get GW50? 25. Excellent. 25 plus 25. So I added them, they become 50. So 75% gray and 25% white. So the phenotype, 75 of the mice will be gray and 25 will be white. So therefore, these experimental results are verified because mostly I'm going to ask you, give you the results and to tell you. Uh, do the factorial analysis to verify the experimental result. Whenever I said this, at the end, whenever you finish, you have to say that the experimental results are verified. But I have the last note for this session. The last note is, if I ask you, I want this factorial analysis in proportion. What did you use? And instead of, instead of percentage, I want to use proportion. So instead of 50%, I'm going to use half. Instead of 50, I'm going to use half. And instead of 50, I'm going to use also half. And instead of 50, I'm going to use half. Here in the table, half will be crossed with half. So here, half, half. Imagine that I want it in proportion. I'm not in percent. But if I didn't mention in the question, you can use the one that you want. Proportion, half times half, half times half, one times one, one, numerator by numerator, and denominator by denominator. Two times two, one over four. One over two times one over two, it's going to be one over four. And here, one over two times one over two is going to be one over four. And here, one over two times one over two also is going to be one over four. Here, if I mentioned it, I want it in proportion, not in percentage. So the gray, one over four plus one over four plus one over four, are going to be the total 75%, which is 3 over 4. And here, 1 over 4 is going to be white. Here, according to the question, I asked, I want it in proportion or in percentage. Okay, guys, this is everything for this session. Next time, we're going to move to talk about the self cross, about the test cross. Self cross is a crossing the F1 with F1. Already we mentioned it. Next time, we're going to focus about the test cross. When we cross, F1 with homozygous and receptive. We will discuss it in the next session. Okay? Thank you.